So I'm going to go through the uh, base problem set on page 705. I'm going to go through the problems in order so that you can skip ahead if there are problems that you already know how to do. So I'll begin with 83. Ammonia plus water is going to yield NH4 plus plus OH minus. B, you've got C5, H5, nitrogen, there you go. Uh, calculate the pH of the following solutions. Since these are strong bases, the pH is going to be um, based off of the OH concentration. First of all, let's just show you the reaction for all of these. Now for A, the concentration of the sodium hydroxide is 0.2 molar, so that means all of that will break apart. I'm going to end up with 0.2 molar hydroxide. So the pOH is going to be negative log of concentration of 0.2 molar, which means the pOH will be the log of 0 0.2, 0 0.6, now the sig figs 0 0.70. Then because the pH plus the pOH equals 14, that means that my um, pH will be 13.3. For B, it's one of those tricky ones. You look at this and you say, okay, well, my concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 10th molar. So that means I should be getting 1 times 10 to the negative 10th molar of the hydroxide. However, this is like one of those problems we did before. Um, you have to take into account the auto-ionization of water. The strong base is yielding a very small amount of OH. The auto-ionization of water is actually producing more hydroxide. So when we calculate the pH, it's actually going to be the pH, well we can do the pOH first, just to kind of be consistent here. So that means my pOH is going to be negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. So my pOH is going to be 7, and therefore my pH is going to be 7 as well. Okay? Um, letter C, it's a 2 molar solution of hydroxide. So the pAOH is going to be negative log of, point of 2 molar. the pOH is negative 0.3 and therefore the pH would be 14.3.
All right. Number 93. What mass of potassium hydroxide is necessary to prepare 800 milliliters of a solution with a pH of 11.56? So um, with many of these problems, there's a number of ways you can do it. I'm going to find the pOH from the pH. If the pH is 11.56, that means my pOH must be 2.44, okay? And then I plug that into the equation to find the concentration of hydroxide. So then my concentration of hydroxide, I take the anti-log anti of negative 2.44 and I get 0 0.00363 molar. Okay? You got to bring the negative side to the over to the other side and then take the the anti-log. Um, if you have trouble with that, let me know. I can show a tutorial on how to use your calculator. Anyhow, that's the molarity of the hydroxide. So that means that because it's a strong base that my strong base would be yielding this therefore my potassium hydroxide would have to have the same concentration so then now it's just a bit of stoichiometry I've got 800 milliliters or 0.8 liters in one liter there are this many um, moles and then one mole of potassium hydroxide weighs 39 plus 1 plus 16 that's 56 grams so then I multiply that out 0 0.8 times 0 0.00363 times 56 that gives me 0 0.163 grams of potassium hydroxide Okay. Um, number 95. Um, what are the major species present in a 0.15 molar ammonium solution? Uh, calculate the hydroxide and the pH of this solution. So this is a weak base. So for a weak base, this is number 95. When you add the water, we're going to get that. We have to do our ice table, and it's a 0.15 molar solution. Zero of this, zero of this. So we're going to shift right. 0.15 molar minus x, x and x. The equilibrium expression, uh, they give us the Kb. Nope, they don't give us the Kb. We have to look up the Kb. So we have to go um, to the table and look up the Kb of ammonia. And the Kb of ammonia is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that's equal to the concentration of ammonium times the concentration of hydroxide over the concentration of ammonia. A reminder, we don't include water because water is liquid. So this is going to be x squared because x times x over the top. 0.15 minus x because the 0.15 molar and the 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth are greater or are farther apart by 100. That means this is too small. I solve for x. I get.
get 0 0.00164 molar of hydroxide. So then I'm going to plug it in and find the pOH by doing the negative log of the concentration of OH. So the pOH is 2.78, which means then the pH must be 11.2 which is good because by adding a base um, to water it should be basic. Alright, um, moving on, number 97. We're doing another um, weak base problem. This time we're doing triethylamine C2H5 plus water, that'll give me C2H5 OH. The concentration of this is a 0.2 molar solution, zero of this, this zero of this, Shift to the right, plus, plus, my KB expression. They give me the KB, which is 4.0 times 10 to the negative fourth, equal to X times X over the top, because it's the products over the reactants. On the bottom, 0.2 minus X. This x is too small compared to the um, four times compared to the kb, which is four times ten to the negative fourth. So when I solve for x, I'm going to get 0 0.00894 molar. All right. And again, that's the concentration of hydroxide. So the pOH is equal to the negative log of my concentration of hydroxide. So my pOH is going to be 2.04 and the pH plus the pOH has to equal 14. So therefore the pH is going to be 11.95 or 96. Okay? Got one more problem to do. Thing to, there we go. Next page. 101. Uh, what is the percent ionization in each of the following solutions? All right, so um, we just have to figure out how much of it breaks apart. Now, it's not a strong base, so we know it's not 100%. Once again, the reaction with ammonia yields this. Okay. The concentration is 0.1 molar, 0, 0, minus x plus x plus x, 0.1 molar minus x, x, x. Then my KB expression is going to be products over reactants. So KB for ammonia is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. I looked that up. 
is going to be equal to x squared over 0.1 minus x. This x is too small compared to my 0.1 molar. So then when I solve for x, I get Point zero zero one one three four molar. So if my initial concentration was point one zero molar and this much of it broke apart, I would divide the two and multiply by a hundred percent to get my percent ionization. So only 1.34% of it breaks apart. And that is, well, actually we do have one more problem in our problem set. We had number 135. Uh, this is just practicing what's going to happen when you put these oxides. Will it be acidic, basic, or neutral when they dissolve in water? So the rule of thumb is... Metal oxides always produce bases. Non-metal oxides always produce acids. So for letter A, when you put calcium oxide in water, it's going to produce calcium hydroxide, a base. Okay? When you put um, sulfur dioxide, sulfur dioxide is a non-metal. Calcium oxide is a metal, but sulfur dioxide is a nonmetal. When you put a nonmetal in water, you are going to produce a acid. How about letter C? Um, what is Cl2O? Chlorine is obviously a nonmetal, so that means you are going to produce. Now, SO3 is a 2 minus, and hydroxide is a 1 minus. What's going to happen here? Well, the chlorine, as you know, bonds with the oxygen. Um, what would it make? Um, it just says to, to say whether it will be acidic or basic. It's going to be acidic. They don't ask us for what it will actually produce, but I can tell you that um, the most common uh, chloride, chloride oxides are ClO2 and ClO3, so it's probably going to make one of those. Considering I see two oxygens, probably ClO2, and then since it's a minus one charge, you'd have something like that. Um, so that's probably what type of acid would be produced. I know that reaction is not balanced. Um, you'd have to go through and balance it. We'd probably need um, to do an oxidation reduction there to, to make sure that thing is balanced. But that's most likely the, the possible answer. All right. Well, thank you very much. And I will then, um, if you have any questions, you can email me. And I will record the uh, questions and the answers on the problem sets.